Are you also dying for rebirth? A fascinating question. Hang in there, join me and we're going to look back at my top 5 favourite moments in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Obviously going to be talking about spoilers, here is your spoiler warning. Daddy's coming home real soon, honey. Number 1. Dropping the plate. So just like in the original, Shinra are going to drop one of Midgar's upper plates to crush the good guys, while writing off the deaths of tens of thousands of innocents as a business expense. Progress requires sacrifice. For me, it was just surreal going from original to modern as you rise the pillar. Tensions rise as Wedge, Biggs, Jesse, they all meet their fate and Cloud struggles to comfort them. You owe me a pizza. <laughs> Remake expands on Biggs, Jesse and Wedge. We even get a chapter dedicated to developing these characters. We're invested, so their end feels so much worse this time. Together, we can take on the world! I like how we get all these new perspectives and discover that it was Rude who was driving Reno's helicopter. You don't actually see who's driving in the original. Shinra does not negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> you get the little scene where Rude shifts the helicopter to save Tifa. Hey! And if you played the original, you know that's because Rude secretly has a little crush on Tifa. Apparently so. At the top of the tower we get this climax with the Reno boss fight, love that they included his ability to trap party members in his pyramids. It's quite a cinematic fight, but cinematic in an awesome way. No time to dick around. One big difference over the original, this time we managed to take down the helicopter. It all happens in the middle of the boss fight, and as I keep saying, love how our health bars are still on screen. It weirdly makes it feel a little bit more real. It's happening live and in the world, rather than loading a separate cinematic. Road! So the helicopter crashes, and you're left wondering, did they just kill Rude? And even though he's currently a bad guy, you gotta feel bad for Reno, who looks a little bit broken while he's still processing what just happened to Rude. And in a fantastically designed or directed moment, you see a hand appear on Reno's shoulder from off screen. The camera pans, and in a little reference to Advent Children, Rude puts on his back of sunglasses and the fight continues. Lift your wings, huh? Such a brilliant moment. Quickie, really want to level up my subscriber count because that's going to unlock early reviews copies of games. Cover lots of RPGs, but would have loved to have gotten an early review copy of Rebirth. Thank you. Number 2. Storming the Shinra Building This whole massive huge segment is something I was really looking forward to. Time to get some payback. Just a series of back-to-back -back escalating events here was incredible on the PlayStation 1. There's a few small changes, for one we now have to break into the car park before making the decision between taking the lift or going stealth mode and climbing the back stairs. I love how both of these options are pretty faithful to the original. We get loads of banter as Barrett struggles to climb all the stairs. Climbing stairs! So much trouble! And it's really goofy using the lift that keeps stopping on the way up to Shinra Troopers or random Shinra employees. Uh, uh. Going up. <sighs> Doors closing. But we arrive at the top floor earlier this time and we witness Sephiroth murdering the president through Genova. And because in the original we arrived after all this happened, this time we have to fend off Genova. Part of me was thinking we shouldn't be doing this, but the whole fight was so awesome, with the music progressively building up until it breaks into Genova's original theme. Okay. <laughs> Which blew my socks off. And that all transitions into Rufus revealing himself, and the president's son takes on Cloud in an epic fight just between the two of them. Well, maybe three. It feels personal and it's a shockingly good fight that requires strategy, and waiting for opportunities or openings, otherwise Rufus will kick you to the dirt. This is all while the rest of Avalanche are battling Shinra and its mechs. And the big moment I was waiting for and just couldn't even imagine in modern visuals, the motorbike chase. The remix music is so awesome, little moments were nods to Advent Children, things are dialed up to 11 with new enemy types, helicopter bombardments and mini bosses. I cannot wait to do more of this in Rebirth's Gold Saucer. Looks like there's going to be so many more enemies on screen at once in that version. 
So the motorbike chase is supposed to end with the motorball mech crashing into the party at the end of the road, and you have to take it on with all the hit points lost during the motorbike chase. It was a pretty awesome way to end this segment, but my mind was blown as motorball crashes through the road early, and you have to take this boss on while still on the motorbike. Come on, you see the piece of shit we're driving here? Says the 300 pound sack of it. Hey! Number three. Don Corneo's Mansion. Before Remake even came out, I was skeptical that modern day Square Enix would be willing to recreate some of the more controversial stuff in the original. Say another word and I'll shove this fan right down your throat. I mean, we're a group of eco-terrorists that go into a brothel to get costume parts for cross-dressing to sneak into a pimp's mansion. Shimmy on over and give daddy some sugar. But they actually did it for the most part and explored some new stuff, like the hand massage parlor. It gets a little awkward out of context door when overheard. How about this? Mm. Or maybe this? Uh. <laughs> uh. Uh. While this time you're not required to do the squats minigame for a wig, it's completely optional and has been fleshed out a bit with different levels of challenge. Some small rewards, and an incredible remix battle theme that'll get you motivated as heck. So the cross-dressing bit, love Leslie's reaction when he instantly realizes the cloud has cross-dressed to get into Don Corneo's mansion. No way. You serious? Is there a problem? While this time, <laughs> while this time, the Don will always choose Cloud to be his bride. We can at least determine the quality of each character's dresses by doing side quests. I could never say no to a sexy girl. Really awesome scene where Tifa and Aira fight their way through the pimp's mansion. Music is awesome and a really sweet moment. Oh, wait. <laughs> Ending with everyone threatening to destroy the Don's balls in different ways, just like in the original. I'll cut him off. Number 4, Airbuster. Airbuster is the second boss of the original game, and the first time we get to hear that awesome boss theme. This time, I liked how you got a little sneak peek of the Airbuster, and before the boss is ready, you get the opportunity to make Airbuster weaker by using the computers to dismantle parts. A little bit more agency to the gameplay. Then you can do the mini game where you had to press the three buttons in sync. Alpha level security, disengaged to get some of those removed parts for yourself. Lots of banter with Barrett as both him and Cloud start to open up a bit more towards each other. Put me on TV, I'm gonna drop some truth. First time we hear the true boss theme from the original game and it hits hard as the airbuster drops in. Number five, Zack, WTF. So towards the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, things start to go off the rails and we get a vision of Zack's final moments. The price of freedom is steep. At the time, I presumed this was some kind of sneak peek towards Zack and Cloud's past that we wouldn't normally get until much later on in the story. Embrace your dreams. Square are going to make me experience it all over again. And that is Zack's tragic end being gunned down by Shinra Troopers. And then it kind of dawned on me. Wait, he's not dying. Then the music suddenly stops as Zack falls to the floor. <sighs> oh, here it is. That's it for Zack, he's gonna die now. No? He's still going. Zack is alive. What does this even mean? I'm back! I hate it when movies or games try too hard to subvert your expectations, and they usually do a terrible job. But you know what? Damn, I'm kind of liking this, and I have so many questions, and I have been going crazy in the years after Remake's release. Was it Sephiroth who saved Zack when he consumes control of fate? Zack has Genova cells that Sephiroth could manipulate. Why is Genova called Genova Dreamweaver? Is Sephiroth weaving our dreams on memories and twisting them? Is this Zack in another multiverse reality after the timeline changed? Developers state that there is only one timeline, and if that is true, then why does Stamp the Dog have a completely different design around Zack? Is it because while we fought Fate and Sephiroth, we travelled almost through a mirror dimension? Did we change reality, or were we temporarily in some kind of singularity while reality changed? Stamp changed. Zack survives. Avalanche dies. Sephiroth beats Cloud and he's now on the way to the reunion. Avalanche comes out the singularity and re-enters back into this now twisted world, where they have doppelgangers from Sephiroth messing with fate. I'm going crazy, even if you only understand a little bit of what I just said. High five. I'm going to do one last prediction or theory video before I start Rebirth. I've had so many thoughts about where Rebirth is going to take us, and a game has never left me with so much theory crafting. It is insane, but I'm so ready for a Rebirth. What are your favourite remake moments? Meeting Aerith? Goofing with Biggs, Jesse and Wedge? Aerith beating someone up with a chair? 
Let me know in the comments. Peace for now.